Welcome back to Bidia Pals Projects. It has been quite a little bit since we have put anything out, um, but we are getting ready for spring. We are in 9B in California, and so it is time for us to start our seeds. Actually, we're a little bit late starting our seeds, so um, but we've all been sick. So we are getting out here, getting our hands dirty, and um, I will be going over what seeds we are planting. Um, we'll do kind of a quick tutorial on a couple of different ways we're starting seeds, and we're trying two different ways. Uh, one is new, one is not. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, and we're going to start some microgreens today. So uh, if you're new here, my name is Jennifer. This is my daughter, Emily. And uh, we are part of what makes Padilla Palace Projects. We're missing my husband. Uh, but uh, we are going to go ahead and get um, everything started and come along with us. solo cup with holes in the bottom and I'll use that with potting soil in it um, so it starts to get those nutrients but right now when they're just germinating they actually don't need all the nutrients so there's no reason for me to use it right off the bat and this is better in the house for me versus the potting soil uh, for allergy reasons uh, one of the methods we're going to try is the uh, soil blocker never used this before I'm excited to try it um, so we're going to do this for a few seeds and um, use trays that have microgreen trays that have holes on the top one and then the bottom one catches the water. And then the other method we're going to use are, this is just a seed, a cheap seed starting tray that we used last year. It has slits on the bottom um, to pop them up and for drainage. And we got this at Walmart for like five bucks, I think, last year. So I'm just going to wash this out and we'll use this for the rest of them. So this is the seed starting mix we're using. This is the first time I've used this brand. Last year I just used the Jiffy Organic. This one I got at a local garden store, um, Green Acres, and it's organic as well. And it is very lightweight. Um, it doesn't have, like, if you look at this, it's super fluffy. Um, it's got, I believe that's perlite in it, and peat moss and all of that good stuff. It's super light. Um, it's nothing hard for a seed to pop through when it germinates. It lets it do it with ease. Whew. So I'm going to wet this down and mix it all around. So you can see down here that even though I'm putting in a lot of water, it's not holding it on the bottom. I'm getting to the point where it's going to start back, and that's when I will stop. But even on the lower side, it's not really holding the water. This is going to absorb a lot of that water. As I'm touching it, it's still really dry. So I'm trying to really get it for the soil blocks to work. It needs to be have moisture. 
and I want to make sure it's going to hold moisture. I want to make sure it's not hydrophobic. Okay, now we can turn this off. I think that's enough. And so I get it all wet before I put it in there, and that stops it from not soaking up after I plant the seeds and I go to water. Um, so to give it everything it needs right off the bat. Probably should not have worn a hoodie with strings. It's still really light, you should feel it. It's still really light, really fluffy, even wet, but it's held a lot of moisture. You should feel it. <laughs> so we're gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes and I am washing off these trays that I have for a second, just making sure any extra residual stuff is off of it. If you had used these for plants before, um, I highly suggest sanitizing them with a, a light bleach water um, to make sure any past um, fungus and things like that that can stop your seeds from growing well to grow. Before we move inside to start filling the dirt um, into the containers, I wanted to show you what we have going right now. Um, we put back out one of our green stalks. I only did it three high. If you notice, I have small ones, large ones, and small one. And um, it's been doing really well for the last couple of months. We've got some different types of lettuces. We've got mustards. Um, I've got some kale and collards and some bok choy and katsoi and all kinds of good stuff in here. Um, I don't know why, like, everybody seems to have an easy time growing Swiss chard. I can't grow Swiss chard, so if you have any tips or tricks on Swiss chard, <laughs> leave them in the comments. I don't care what time of year it is, for some reason it doesn't grow. I have the same issue with beets, and I know they're the same family, so I'm assuming that's why. Um, but, um, oh, this, is right. this thing is done really well. Over here we've got our radishes and carrots. I've already harvested some of the radishes um, and roasted those. The turnips over here are going. The beets did not take off, but the turnips have been great. Uh, they don't have roots yet, but they're starting to get firmer at the base. We haven't had rain in a few weeks, and since they're in containers, I do need to water them. Uh, coming up here pretty soon, uh, one of these tubs will go away. Uh, the other tub will be a the tomato bucket, and then uh, for our large tomatoes, and then we'll bring out one more green stock because we can have three planters outside. And we brought our bucket of dirt inside, and um, I have our trays set up. Um, That's not for the use right now. But we have our tray set up with the one with the holes on the top, the one without the holes on the bottom. So I have the option to bottom water or I have the option to water from the top, but otherwise I can put it on a heat mat. I can do whatever I need to do to it. Um, so I did try the soil block once just now, and I'm wondering if this is, if I'm not supposed to use seed starting mix, I might be supposed to use actual potting soil for it to hold it together better. And so I think I'm only going to try a couple of these and then um, do the majority of them in the trays up there and uh, go from there. Basically, you want to get this filled up with the moist dirt and really push it in. feel like a little kid making a mud pie. <laughs> All right. And then once you have that and it's really pushed in, I've seen some people like push against the edge. This container is more flimsy, so I'm not doing that. And then you take it and you push the lever down and it creates a soil block, but I'm losing 
the top half of this one each time. The rest of them did okay, but they seem very frail. So that's what I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant on this. Okay, so we're gonna go again. If you are a soil blocker and you know the answer, if um, seed starting mix or potting soil is preferred, that would be great. This was one of my Christmas presents and I haven't done a whole lot of research on it. Um, I know some people use it just for their regular dirt outside to create spots. So I don't know, that might be the issue. But I'm probably gonna do these three and then stop at that. Oh, that would do better. Alright, but it's still falling apart. Alright, so we're going to use those as our experiment because I'm really curious about this. And then I'll take these guys and just go ahead and fill this up. I don't want to make it too compact, but on the other side, I don't want it to sink once it settles. So um, I do, I am pushing a tiny bit with this. This is a really light, fluffy mixture. Even pushed together, it's not super hard, but I'm really not tamping it down really hard. Okay, so we're inside. We have all of the dirt in these trays. I have a very small container garden, so it's not, I don't need a ton. Again, I'm using this to experiment with the soil blocks. And then um, I might do some potting soil ones as well in a little bit and compare the two and then I go from there. Um, I'm also going to be doing one tray of microgreens with the seed starting mix and one tray of microgreens with the potting soil mix. I've already used the potting soil mix um, in the past, but I do want to kind of compare if they still do pretty good with it. Um, so we'll go over that towards the end after I get these planted. So what I've already done is create kind of a map for um, what I'm planting. And I'm gonna have um, two green stock towers in one of the wine barrels that the um, carrots and radishes and things like that are in right now. And that'll, those will be tomatoes later on. Um, so I am gonna do three large um tubs from the green stalks and three short ones on each one to get six i'm going to try six and see how that works um since you can do seven on the short ones the small green stalk planters um which is the leaf planter and then um you can do five of the regular so i'm going to do three and three and do that twice and see how that works um we're going to have a variety of different things i'm trying not to push it too far um, I really want to put things that we're going to eat fresh for the most part um, and then some stuff that we're going to use for our skincare and things like that. So um, a lot can fit in those. So each tray holds um, six. There's six spots for it. So, okay, so um, there are 12 trays of six, which is 72, which come to find out there are. 12 
rows of six in this planter here. So we are good to go with this. Um, now, not all of these I'm gonna start inside right now. Uh, so I may do some of these in their rows um, to match what they're gonna be planted. But some of the stuff won't be, um, like this one is supposed to be all mint and I'm not starting that from seed. So there's gonna be a few things that are gonna plug in differently. Um, I'm also gonna be growing some micro tomatoes inside and the little containers on this table. Um, these little cherry tomatoes were super good last year. We did the orange hat, so I think I have a few seeds left, so I'm gonna try to get these to germinate. Um, and then in the tomato tub, I'll be doing two tall tomatoes, uh, Barry's Crazy Cherry and Black Strawberry Tomato. And then I, in fall, I'll probably switch one of these out um, and do the cream sausage tomatoes um, that are not as tall. They're not, they're a determinant. They're not an indeterminate. So they will only grow a certain height and so forth. Um, and try to get a second run in fall after it gets super hot here. So that's kind of what we have going on. So I'm going to go through, I'll tell you some of the varieties. Um, I will actually tell you the varieties really fast and then I'll start planting um, because I can speed through some of the planting stuff. I don't think you wanna spend all the time watching me plant. So I'll tell you what we're growing um, in our small space and um, then we'll go from there. So uh, we're doing pumpkin spice jalapenos. Um, these do not taste like pumpkin. They are just a jalapeno. Uh, they, and when they get ripe, they turn orange though. So we're gonna do those. Um, the black Hungarian uh, pepper, this one is like a jalapeno and it's the purple and it's really, really good. Uh, we're gonna try the lemon drop pepper. This will be too hot for me to try. Um, my husband really wants to try this though and it might make a really good hot sauce. And then we're doing the sun bright sweet pepper for a bell. We're gonna try Pippin's golden honey, which is sweet with a little bit of heat, I believe. Oh, it's a sweet pepper. So, and then we're gonna do Aro's con polo. And um, we're gonna do shishito, corbachi, and the nada pino. The nada pino is the um, jalapeno that has no heat. So that's great for me. And then the corbachi is a great snacking pepper. It's um, thin skin, sweet. It's, I really like this one. Plus it's a fun shape. So those are the peppers we're gonna be doing. Uh, the tomatoes, I already showed you what we're gonna be growing. We are gonna try a few eggplants. So we're gonna do the Japanese white eggplant, which is only a two to three inch white fruit. The Rosa Bianca, which is bigger, I believe. And then the Chinese string, which is supposed to be one of the um, best tasting. And then um, I use calendula and soaps and all kinds of stuff. So we're doing a flashback calendula, strawberry blonde calendula, and a snow princess calendula. I grew these last year. I really like them. I like the color variation with the dark and the light, uh, the dark on the back side of the petal, the light on the front side of the petal. Um, it's really cool in soaps and scrubs and things like that. So we're doing those again. And the Snow Princess just looks really pretty and it looks like it has a ton of petals compared to the other ones. So I'm really excited to try these. Um, Calendula is very good for the skin and they actual ha actually handle the colder weather. Uh, so those will probably be some of the first plants that I put out um, once everything gets going. And then um, I said we're gonna be doing mint. Uh, mint is, I'm gonna be buying started plants for that. And uh, we used a lot of mint last year. I really liked strawberry mint. And um, I think it was berries and cream. That was really good. And we got spearmint. We're probably gonna end up with chocolate mint, a peppermint, I don't know. We're gonna end up with six mints. I don't know which ones for sure. I know spearmint because we have it. It just depends on what the local shops have this year. Um, but we eat mint 
all summer long. I add it to my water. I add it, we make tea with it. We'll dehydrate it. Um, so I'm really excited to have a bunch of mint. Uh, when you're in a small space, it's important that you choose things that you actually want to eat um, and to use and that you find beauty in um, because you have such a small space, you want it to be really well utilized. Um, one of the things that we fell in love with last year was, um, last year and I think the year before, was the Navajo Sunset, uh, I say it, Agastache, but I think it's Agastache. Um, so we, <laughs> I love Agastache, <laughs> but I'm saying it wrong, I know it. So, um, this one is, we just, it's minty, it's citrusy, it's beautiful, uh, butterflies love it. The bees love it. Like pollinators were all over this thing, but you walk by it and it just smells delicious. So this made me really want to try all of them. Um, so we're actually going to try quite a few. So we have the Navajo Sunset. We're going to try the Texas Hummingbird Mint. Um, this is supposed to make a great tea and a great mosquito repelling oil. You get two in one. I'm good with that. Um, we're also going to try the Apache Sunset version and then the Rose Mint and then we're going to do two hyssops. Um, we're going to try the Korean hyssop and then the Arcado Pink hyssop. And again, these are going to be for teas. Um, we can use them for flower decorations if we wanted to. Um, we can use them in potpourri if we love them. There's all different things we can use them for. Um, so the entire top of one of my green stalks will be these. So it's all bursting full of color at the top and super pretty. Um, so those six will be at the top. And then uh, I have an healthy, unhealthy, healthy <laughs> addiction to basil. It's an unhealthy addiction. <laughs> to basil. We love basil. I'm really cutting down the varieties this year for the ones that we know that we really, really like. Um, blue spice basil has like a vanilla um, overtone to it, and I love it. Um, I I would wear this as a perfume. So we are going to do this one again, um, and this one's probably going to be down with my in my tomato bin. And then my husband fell in love with lettuce leaf basil. So we're gonna grow some of this outside, but then I'm gonna to try to grow some of this inside as well and compare how the two grow. The lettuce leaf basil is great on sandwiches. Um, and then we're gonna do a mamola basil. And that's just a regular Italian basil. We are gonna do Thai sweet basil. Uh, my husband really likes pho, pho. Faux? It's faux. faux. He really likes faux. And um, this is one of the things that is in that. So I want to try to be able to make that for him home for him. And I think this will be really good. Maybe it is pho. <laughs> I don't know. And then there's purple ruffles basil. Um, I've done the dark opal basil in the past. I did want to just try this one um, because it just looks pretty and fun. So we're going to do that for a pop of color. It's supposed to be um, an Italian flavor. Um, oh, hold on. It says basil remains purple when cooked, but is most delicious when eaten fresh. So, and then this one is a new one for me. Um, it's the Ghana Cocomiso <laughs> Mesa Basil. I can't say it this time. Uh, <laughs> in West Africa, this plant is common for every home because of its endless um, versatility. It's traditionally used to prepare poultry, but it is also many other culinary and medicinal uses. So we'll see, it's supposed to thrive in heat. So I thought that might be good for here. And then um, the African Nunum basil. Um, and this is subtropics. Again, it's um, supposed to thrive in heat. So that's why I got those two varieties to see if they do any better um, in our 114 degree dry summer weather. So we'll try that. Um, 
Some of the other things I'm going to be doing, I'll do one plant, I believe, of the zinnias. This is purely because I like to cut a couple zinnias and put them in the kitchen in a little bud vase. So I know I'm not going to get a ton from one plant. However, I'm excited to have a few. And I love the vintage look of the queen lime. And nasturtiums are edible. They are yummy and they are beautiful. They're also a great trap crop for um, aphids. So they'll go there first and leave some of your other plants alone. So I'm going to do the Alaska mix. Uh, this one's new to me this year. The tip top rose. It looks very pretty. And uh, the jewel peach melba are the three that I'm going to be growing. Um, I got the variety of colors and I am super excited. Um, I can add these to my salads. Uh, the leaves are kind of peppery. Um, the Alaska mix has variegated leaves, so it's super fun. So I've got that. And then I'll be doing some common chives, some moss curled um, parsley, Zloty Land chamomile. I'm not doing, I think I took marjoram off my list. I did because I bought lemon thyme. The real question is, are you doing Brussels sprouts? I'm not this year. They take too many days. It takes months and months and months. And for the amount that you get, for the small amount, I actually need to start them in fall and grow them all winter um, because we have such a short winter. Mm. And um, they did not, yeah, they take like six months or something crazy like that, I think. Oh. Um, all right, so I got lemon thyme. It's super pretty. I'll pop a picture up on this spot right here. I got a variegated one this year and it smells delicious and looks delicious. <laughs> so I can't wait to use that. That's one of my favorite herbs. Um, I am going to start seeds for regular time. And then I'm also starting seeds for orangello time. And then um, I'm trying three different lemon bombs um i might end up switching out the regular lemon bomb and buying one from the store just so i get it started faster just take a lot longer they're part of the mint family but there's also lemon silo um lemon cello lemon cello yeah it's cello and then uh mandarina lemon balm and then regular lemon balm so we'll see uh, these are great for medicinal purposes and for teas, so I'm excited to have those. Um, I am here in the next few days actually going to be doing cilantro. I'm going to try an inside and outside. Cilantro is a cool weather crop. You do not grow this at the same time as tomatoes and peppers. Um, you would think that everything that goes into salsa grows together at the same time. It really doesn't. The hate heat, the bolt, and um, we get hot here pretty fast, so I always lose my cilantro pretty fast. So I am also going to try these as, I found a microgreen set of cilantro. Um, so I'm gonna try to grow them as a microgreen inside so I can at least have some cilantro stuff. And if we like that, then I'll buy a bunch more of those and go from there. Um, I am gonna be starting, um, because the tomatoes won't be ready to go out for a couple of months, um, I'm gonna be starting the uh, sugar daddy piece and um i will have these going outside until i'm ready to switch them out they're 60 to 65 days so it's two months until um i'm ready until they're harvestable so hopefully hopefully this will grow good um but we wanted a few of them and then I'm either going to grow one or both of these. So they're bunching onions. There's Hashiko and Red Beard bunching onions. And I'm really going to do a limited number of squash uh, just because of space. So I'm going to try a Table King Bush acorn squash. It's a winter squash. Um, even if I get one or two off of this, I will be happy. Um, so we're going to do that. And then I'm going to do some basic zucchini. Um, and then I'll be doing uh, succession, so those, so I'll continually swap them out. And then, um, miniature white cucumbers, I'm going to try these. The plants will only get about three feet long, um, which is why I'm doing these over uh, some other ones. 
because in the green stock and having limited space, uh, I'll probably put this, I'm gonna decide if I'm putting it on the bottom row yet or if in letting it just trail out a little bit and on the ground or if I'm gonna put it um, up higher and just let it dingle. Uh, so we'll see what I decide to do, but we are gonna do those. All three of these, the squash and the cucumbers are not being started now. Um, I'll start those outside later on or in a soil block later on. Um, then we have our beans. Uh, we love dragon tongue bush beans here. That's one of my husband's favorite. And then we're also gonna do tongues of fire. Um, they look cool and stripy and fun. The dragon tongue has purple instead of pink on it like this. Um, they're super good as a young bean. And then I think you can save these both for um, dry beans, but we just eat them young. And then um, we'll be doing these and succession sowing these as well. Um, I'm going to try one Swiss chard because <laughs> I can't grow this, but I really want to. So I'm going to try one Swiss chard. I am going to try one plant of collards in the summer and I will have a kale um, in the summer as well. And then I'm going to try, oh no, I got rid of this. I decided not to do this one. I'm waiting on this one till later. The, I really want to try amaranth because you can eat the leaves and you can eat the seeds and it's cool. But um, I ended up putting mint in instead of this. So I'm not going to do that one. So that's kind of what we got going on. Um, so I'm going to go through and go ahead and uh, start planting um, and getting everything we need in so um, we can get these babies growing. Uh, I'll come back at the end and show you our setup and um, what we, how it looks for it to start growing. And then as these bump up, I can tag in the description of this, um, and maybe across the top in some cards, um, videos from last year. I really followed along a lot with um, starting peppers and tomatoes um, and uh, potting them up and then planting them outside and so forth. Um, I do live in an apartment complex, so there isn't a whole lot towards the end of last year because uh, the property management had wanted us not to have plants outside. Um, it became an issue, so now we have to where we can have three planters. Um, so we're hoping we'll be all good with this. Um, I'm always trying to grow. <laughs> so we had tried to move the planters inside last year, but between my husband's and my allergy, I ended up... Um, going back to work and it was just too much to try to have stuff inside, grow lights on with a window. I was concerned about um, the sun coming in too much and fire and re reflection off of stuff. And um, so we ended up just letting that go, um, which is why you didn't see any more of that. So we just cut our losses and um, we are starting again this year. I'm hoping to get the spinning base uh, for the green stock planters. That way I don't have to actually roll them anywhere. I could just spin them in a circle and let them rotate and get the sun um, and just let them grow outside and be um, pollinated by all the wonderful little creatures outside. So we're going to get started. Um, I'd love to hear if you've grown any of these, um, if you've grown them in a green stock and um, if you've started your seeds yet or if you're going to be starting your seeds yet. Uh, stay along for our journey. My daughter and I have a ton more videos up in our heads that we want to put together. We have some craft ones, some uh, cooking ones. We have uh, skin carry type ones. We have all kinds of stuff that we are going to be doing. We will be touching back on um, gardening. Um, we're just it took an adjustment to get back to work and um, not be home doing this throughout the day. So. Uh, Stay with us as we get our bearings back and our post more videos.
So I thought I'd show you what I do to uh, mark what is what. So this is a large clip. I just know everything with this clip on it is on this piece of paper. And then everything that I put over here will be on a paper that has little clip written on it. And I do it from uh, back to front, left to right. So I started planting here. So these two rows have these plants in them. So I'll always keep it, um, this clip exactly where it is. So I know that this is the front and um, that is the back, even if I have to move it for some reason. So it's just my tip for what I do. And then um, on the green stock planters, I actually label with these. I tried chalk muckers on the actual containers. I tried putting little sticks with the names in it, all kinds of stuff. But these um, clothespins uh, on the actual container with uh, what it is written on it seems to be uh, the best for me and then the larger containers I just keep a map of kind of like I'm gonna be doing over here all right so the first one I'm gonna plant is gonna be in the potting soil and this one is from Haas Tools I just opened it and it is done peas I've never grown from Haas Tools and I've never grown this variety but I'm gonna Sprinkle them pretty thick on here. Microgreens you want really close together. And then we'll sprinkle a little extra soil on top. I'm gonna do half the tray, these done peas. And I'm gonna do half the tray broccoli. Get a few over here. They're not going to stay in here long enough to really, um, it doesn't matter how close they are really. Okay. So the next one is going to be the broccoli. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle pretty heavily. the broccoli on that side. Okay, the next tray over here, we are gonna be doing the um, cilantro and a basil blend. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the cilantro in the back. And again, I am doing this super heavy on purpose. I'm actually just gonna dump more out like this. And then the chow basil is dark opal basil and uh, Genovese basil. Okay, so now this one, it's a lot smaller, but it's kind of like what I did with my mustard when I just grew those. Get that sprinkled all over the top. You can see all of those seeds. All right, so now I'm just gonna sprinkle. I don't want this super deep, so I just wanna kinda like, this would have been better actually if it was dry, but it is what it is. And this is that soil that I just moistened up to plant on my other seeds. So I really wanna get this thinned out. It's not as easy to do with one hand. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna come in and do the same thing, just lightly cover, but this one's potting soil. This one's not moistened. Ooh, let's break that up really fast. So I am gonna have to spritz the top of this Pretty good. I 
and that's the gist of all you do I'll push it in I'm gonna add a little bit more dirt on the top of this these don't have to be covered perfectly it's one of the perks of this And I'll moisten the top of this. I'll moisten the top of all these by spritzing them down. And then we will be checking back in as these grow. I am going to add heat mats underneath this one. And actually all three of these. I'll add heat mats underneath all three of these. And then the things that really, really need the heat mats are back here. That's the peppers and the tomatoes. This is more of the herbs and things, so I did that on purpose, so if I need to put a heat mat on half of it and not the other half, I can do that. And we will be checking back in with you guys um, after uh, these start sprouting, so stay tuned.